And we're back tonight with more local news. The environmental chief said today the government is open-minded about compensating residents affected by landfill expansion plans. And this could come in the form of a subsidy for the residents' municipal solid waste charges in the future. Emily Allen reports. During a public hearing on Saturday on the government's plan to expand the territory's landfills and build a waste incinerator, the issue of compensation was raised. Some criticized the administration for failing to offer compensation to the affected people. Secretary for the Environment Wong Kam Singh told TVB News Today the government is open-minded about the idea, even though he had previously ruled it out as unfeasible. Wong said if there is such a demand from the community, the government can collect public opinions for analysis and consideration. But he said subsidizing the affected people would be complicated, and right now only Taiwan and South Korea have such practices. In South Korea, residents who live within 300 meters of an incinerator will be given subsidies. However, Wong stressed there are difficulties involved, such as who will decide on the perimeters. The environmental chief ruled out suggestions that the expansion of landfills should be carried out in phases depending on progress in the waste reduction scheme. If we uh, wasted uh, discretion uh, a decade or two decades ago, it's doable, but not now. We have to do all this at the same time. Wang added the government has proposed a reduction in the expansion plan for the Two Moon landfill to under 200 hectares. He said to completely do away with the expansion is impossible, given that the existing landfills will be full in the next few years. Evelyn Lang, TVB News. Well, Financial Secretary John Jung isn't ruling out the possibility of future adjustments to Hong Kong's tax system, responding to criticism from youngsters about the local tax system, which they say favours high-income groups. Jung said in his blog that the current salaries tax is calculated at a progressive rate. Jung believes those who pay salaries tax would disagree with criticism that the system favours the rich. He added the current tax system runs on the principle whereby those who are capable bear more responsibility although the question was to what extent. Jung said the government will weigh up different considerations, but did not rule out future adjustments to the tax system. Police have arrested four suspects in connection with a burglary syndicate. Officers acting on a tip-off laid an ambush at an eatery in Tokwa Wan this morning. Two of four men who broke into the premises on Paktai Street were arrested on the spot. The other two fled the scene, but officers caught up with one man after stopping his car near Argyle Street playground. The eatery did not suffer any losses. This afternoon, officers took one of the suspects to a flat in Sham Shui Po as part of their investigation. Authorities arrested another suspect in the flat. The police believe the people arrested belong to a burglary syndicate that's linked to eight other break-ins. Dozens of pro-government protesters urged the administration today to implement national security legislation. Members of the Voice of Loving Hong Kong gathered at Victoria Park and made their way to the central government offices. They want the government to implement Article 23 of the Basic Law, which bans treasonous acts against the central government. The group believes this would prevent the disruption of social order from movements like the one against mainland tourists. It hopes the government would come up with a timetable for the implementation of Article 23. All right, Tony, how ready for sports? That's right, and not very good news if you're a Gunners fan, and we'll talk all about it. It was a high-scoring night in the English Premier League as Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester City combined for 17 goals. Unfortunately for Arsenal, they were on the wrong end of a 6-0 scoreline to Chelsea. Here's Jameson Wong. And finally for tonight, a group of students from Oxford University is in town to teach local students how to sing without instruments. Vicky Kung introduces us to an a cappella ensemble and the musical mission. Hello, we're the Oxford Gargoyles and we're a group of 14 singers. We sing a cappella, which means we use just our voices and no instruments. We mostly do jazz. We sing in lots of different parts. Now we're kind of singing, we spend a lot of time together, we cook together, we go out together, and best of all, we get to travel together. And bam, they're here in Hong Kong.
Kong on a 10-day musical exchange trip that's lined up with performances in the evening and choral workshops in the day at seven different schools. We've learned many techniques of a cappella like beatbox and we know how to... I also think that the style of music that we sing is quite different from a lot of groups that you might find in Hong Kong. And so uh, by exposing people to new music, um, we hope that we can sort of open people's minds to new styles of music. Veteran musicians in the local a cappella scene welcome the outside exposure. Hong Kong audiences, their taste is kind of too narrow. They listen mostly to canto pop and mando pop. Um, in order to please the audiences, local a cappella groups have to cover lots of uh, mando pop and canto pop. Many audiences still think that a cappella singing is imitation of mainstream artists. Feng Feng's broadening audience appreciation of all music types is crucial for a cappella development here. One of the coolest things about a cappella singing is that you don't need bulky instruments anymore. You can sing whenever and wherever you want. It's as easy as a snap. Vicky Kong, TVB News. And that's the news for tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night. It was cool this morning and it was rather dry this afternoon at 5 p.m. The northeast monsoon was affecting the South China coastal areas. Up until 5 p.m., today's temperatures range from 15.9 to 22 degrees, with the relative humidity standing between 54 and 77 percent. The current temperature is 19 degrees Celsius. The fire danger warning is yellow and the fire risk is high. So, Freddy, how's the weather tomorrow? Oh. It will be mainly fine tomorrow. Temperatures will range from 17 to 23 degrees. There will be sunny periods in the next few days. Tomorrow's air quality health index will range from low to moderate. And the maximum UV index forecast for tomorrow will be about 8. Now, here's the latest global weather update. Cloudy in Shanghai and Xiamen, sunny in Taipei. Cloudy in Guangzhou and Chengdu, sunny intervals in Macau. Cloudy in Beijing, sunny in Seoul and Tokyo. Thunderstorms in Bangkok and Manila, sunny. Showers in Ho Chi Minh City. Showers in Kuala Lumpur and Jakarta, sunny intervals in Singapore. Thunderstorms in New Delhi, showers in Karachi, sunny in Mumbai. Sunny intervals in Cairo and Nairobi. Thunderstorms in Brisbane, showers in Sydney, Melbourne and Auckland. Sunny in Toronto and New York. Sunny in Vancouver, foggy San Francisco, sunny intervals in Los Angeles. Sunny intervals in London, sunny in Paris, showers in Amsterdam, cloudy in Frankfurt, snow in Zurich. And that's the weather. Have a great evening.